Welcome to your second video and in this video what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at how to build an XY scatter chart uh, along with all the formatting that you might want to use in one of these charts. Um, so we're building this for a menu engineering sheet so we want to make sure that we're using the proper columns, the proper information for this chart. So whenever you're not too sure what you're comparing it to, uh, well, what you're going to be using for your axis is for your values within this uh, chart. Just think back to these two columns right here. Okay, What have we been evaluating to find out whether something's a puzzle, a star, a plow horse, or a dog? We evaluated our contribution margin and our menu mix. So we compared each item contribution margin and all the menu mixes. So those are actually the two columns we're going to use to put together our XY scatter chart. So we're going to highlight just the values from, <coughs> pardon me, just the values from the menu mix, no title, so just the values. So we'll just click and select. Then we're going to hold down the control button, okay? And then we're going to select just the item CM, the item contribution margin. And then we're going to let go of control. <coughs> So now you should have both of these items selected, but only the things that are in gray right now. Once you have that, you want to click on insert, and then you look for the chart, and it's actually going to be this one right here, insert scatter, X, Y, and that's what we want, and it's going to be the first one, and we're going to click on that, and there you go. This is the chart. And it's going to show us on one axis the menu mix of so profitability. On the other axis, it's going to show us the item contribution margin. Um, we'll get to how we're going to be able to communicate that to people in a second. So uh, first things first, let's make this bigger so you guys can all see it. First thing we want to do when we have a chart, we need to communicate what the chart is all about. So um, menu analysis for... Um, Mark's Restaurant, okay, we could do that, uh, we could call it a menu engineering analysis for Mark's Restaurant, okay, that way when someone looks at this chart right away just by looking at the title, they know what they're looking at, okay. One thing that they won't know right away is what these are, what's this in dollars, what is this in percentages, I don't get it, okay. So if we click back on our chart on the outside area here and click on the plus sign, I have an option to add axis titles. I definitely want to add axis titles, okay? Because now I can change them. So now you'll see an axis title here and an axis title here. <clears throat> if we start with the vertical axis, we're going to highlight the words and then we're just going to type in item contribution margin okay so now anyone who looks at this chart can see that it's item contribution margin then for our axis title down here for horizontal one okay we're going to type in menu mix percentage okay and then you can just click off so right now the reader already knows more about this chart than it did in the first place all right, so what else can we do at this point? Um, well, first of all, we could start to eliminate some of this white space. Okay, so if you take a look down here, there's nothing from zero to two dollars. There's also nothing in the area from zero to four percent. So we need to want to change that. Okay, we want to make it so we don't have any of this dead space in this chart. So if you go over to your vertical analysis anywhere on it and just double click. Okay you should get this format chart area, okay? So make sure you double click on one of the numbers or else you double click the background. So let's do this again, just to be f safe. We'll go to one of the numbers on the vertical axis and double click. And then this is what you should get. So under axis options, which is this, these three little columns together, okay? The very first thing you're going to see is you're gonna see bounds. Okay, so bounds is how far, okay, this right here. What do you want the minimum number to be and what do you want the maximum number to be? 
So the minimum number we said here, we only need to start at $2 because there's nothing from zero to two. So let's change the minimum number to two and press enter. We could also get rid of um, the decimal places. Okay, so while we're in this area, if we click on number, and then we go down to decimal places here. We can put this to zero decimal places and press enter. And you'll notice that this goes down to just the dollars. That already looks a lot better. Okay. While we're in the format axis, okay, right now we're formatting the vertical axis, but if we just click on any of the numbers on the horizontal axis, you'll see that now we're, taking, we're taken to the axis options for that axis. Okay. So we said that we could probably start at 4% instead of 2% or instead of 0% because there's nothing in this area right here. What we can do is we can start at 0 0.04. Now, why do we start at 0 0.04? That's because it's 4%. 4% as a number is 0 0.04. So we'll just hit 4 and we'll hit enter. And already, and we'll just move this over here. That looks much better again. We're starting to spread out all of our markers quite a bit more. Okay, So we were in here. While I'm in here, again, let's get rid of these decimal places so we can click on number and then put this to zero and press enter. Okay. The last thing I might do while I'm in here, which I should have done over here, is I might add some tick marks. So if you click on tick marks, we can click on major type and on the outside. Okay? And what that's going to do is it just added these little lines over here okay? that point to the 12 and point to the 10. We'll do that here too. We'll click on this axis. We'll click on tick marks and major type and on the outside. Okay. So uh, already we're looking a lot better. We're starting to spread everything out. We've formatted our axis a bit. We've named it. We've named the name of the chart. We're looking good. We just need to do a bit more right now. So we'll get out of the format because now the next thing I want to do, we'll click on the outside area of the chart here, the chart area, and we'll click on the plus sign. Okay. In here, what we can do is we can get rid of the grid lines, and that's these lines that are within the chart here. So we're going to take those off, and we're going to have this empty. It's going to become a lot clearer to you in a second why we're doing that. Okay. So we can click the plus sign and get rid of it. Now, I think I'd like a bit of color for the background for this chart. So I'm going to double click just the chart area background. And the first thing that should pop up is Format, Chart Area, Chart Options, and Fill and Line. We could do a solid fill hill of fill here if we wanted to. We can go this kind of blue. We can go any color we want here. Okay. But what's nice, you could also put a picture. Sorry, you could uh, pick a picture from online, from a file, <clears throat> whatever you'd like. What we are going to use, though, is probably this gradient fill. Okay. It kind of gives a nice effect in the background. Um, yeah, it just gives a nice little background for the whole chart. The only thing uh, with this now is the fact that the background for the chart itself, uh, I think we should go back to white. And that's the plot area right here Okay, that I'm just kind of swirling my mouse around. So if I only click on that plot area, you'll see that now only that area is selected. So what I can do here is I can click on Solid Fill, and then it automatically goes to this green color. I'm going to go for white, which is the first one. And that, again, looks much better already. So we've got a nice little look to this background, but at the same time, um, we've got, we can be a bit more clear as to inside this plot area, what's going on. So, uh, and by the way, should have said this at the beginning, if at any point um, you're, if this is going too fast, click pause, rewind the video, watch it again, and then go do the same thing on your Excel sheet. Okay, so take your time with this, there's no rush. The next thing we can probably format are these little dots, because right now I don't know which one is which, okay, and they all look blue. So we want to alter these for sure. So if we just click on, while this format area is still open, just click on one of the dots, all the dots get selected. Okay? So there's a few things we can do here. 
it automatically brings you to the line. No line, solid line, gradient line, automatic. We don't have any lines here. What we have are markers. So we're going to click on markers. And then one thing that doesn't happen is these marker options here doesn't automatically open up. So we're going to click on marker options. Okay? And then these really aren't big enough. Okay? Before we add, we increase them in size though, we should probably change them, the color of each one. Okay? So if you go to the fill area right here, <clears throat> we're going to click on vary colors by point. Okay? And now if we were to un basically click anywhere else in the chart, you'd see that all of these points are now different colors, which will be nice. Okay. Now I want to make them bigger because this really isn't big enough. Okay. So we're going to click on built-in, check built-in, and we're going to increase the size. And now you start to see them getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's probably a good size right there. Okay. Now we can really see these dots and these two that are overlapping, we can still see one over the other. Okay. Now, what else can we do to make this look better? Um, up here, you can either fill or inline the marker, or we can add some effects. I think if we stay on 3D format, which is the only one that's open, if we just do a bevel, so if you click on top bevel, and you can select, uh, let's even just say the first one. Okay. Now all of these, or an indent one, it doesn't matter which one you do, but this one just makes it look like a bit more like a button. It just adds a bit of a 3D effect so that they stand out even more. Now while we're in the format data series, there's maybe one more thing we should do. And we're going to click on series options. Okay. Uh, my apologies. We're going to click on, we're going to click on the, uh, we're going to get rid of the formatting area. And while we're in the chart again, we're going to go and we're going to add data labels. Okay. Now, before we check off data labels, we're going to click on the arrow and we're going to click on more options. So we're going to click on the arrow for data labels. And what data labels are, are little labels uh, that are going to go with each button. Okay. Really what our aim is to do is to make it so that we can see the name of each menu item okay, for each button. We're going to click plus, we'll go over to data labels, but the arrow, and we're going to go to more options. Okay, And now this menu comes up, format data labels. Right now you're going to see that it looks like it's the item contribution margin that's showing up as the label, but I don't want them. I don't want that. I want the name of the menu item. So the label options, the label contains Y value. No, I don't want the Y value. I want to check that off. Okay, um, my apologies, before you click on the Y value, we have to add our other one. So we've got to add our data labels back. Okay, more options. Okay, so in this area right here. So while you have the data labels selected and you're in the label options, okay, we're going to click on label options. And before we uncheck Y value, which was my mistake the first time, we're going to click on value from, sorry, check on the, we click on the data labels, label options, value from cells. Okay. We have to be able to see this. That's why I had to move it. So value from cells, check that off. And now it's going to ask you to select a data label range. So what do we need? We want these to be the names of our buttons. Okay. And if we press OK, now we start to see that each one of these has seafood, 1082, roast beef, 889. So now that we have a different label, the value from the cells, now we can uncheck Y value. And now we only have the names of these items. Okay. So while we were in here too, you would have seen something written show leader lines. What leader lines are, are lines, if you decide to move these around, you'll see that there's a line that follows it so that it tells you which one is which. Okay? The reason why we might want to leave, uh, leave the leader lines on is if you take a look over here, I can't see what this is. So I'm going to bring it out over here. And that ends up being the salmon right here, which is good that I moved it. And then here's another one that I can't see. 
So I would select the data label, go to the outside of the box where I get four arrows like this, click, hold down, and there you go. Now so that everything's not too jumbled up, I can actually, with the use of the leader line, see which button is which. So really there's just two more steps to this. Okay? And really what are we looking at? We're looking at identifying which items are dogs, which items are stars, which items are plow horses, which items are puzzles. Okay, so by doing that, we're just going to use the insert shape. Okay, so if you click on the insert ribbon up here, and yours may look slightly different, but you should have shapes as an option, either as a small icon or a bigger one right here. We're going to click on shapes, and we're going to select a line. Okay, now where this line is going to go is where your average menu mix is and where your average contribution margin is. In this case, from my memory, we're using 7%. So we're just going to kind of look between 6 and 8. This is about halfway. Okay. We're going to hold down our click and hold down our mouse. And at the same time, hold down the shift key. And we're going to pull up. What the shift key does is it keeps your line straight the whole way up. Okay. And then we're going to let go of both. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this line is kind of the same color as this. It doesn't stand out as much. So what I might want to do while I have the line selected, I automatically get taken to this format ribbon. Okay. This format ribbon is going to allow me to change the size of this line. Okay. So I'm going to click on shape outline and I'm going to add more weight. Okay, so there you go. It starts to get thicker. This looks much better. Okay. And what I would might do while I still have the line selected is maybe I can add some dashes. Okay. So I would do that. Now I'd want to do this again so I can go insert line. And before I do that, what we'll do is I'll bring you over here with the chart so that you understand more what I'm doing. So if we take a look, this 7% was the percentage menu mix. The reason why I'm putting a line there is because that's what I compared each item to. Remember when we compared this in the first video, we always compared it to my percentage menu mix. In this column, we compared every item contribution margin to the average contribution margin. So that's where I'm going to create my other line. Before I do that, I'm just going to reformat this. I'm going to select my line, click on format, click on shape outline, and go back to dashes and pick the first dash. Okay. Now I want to add my other line at $5.77. So we'll go insert, shape, line, Look for about three quarters between six and five. Click, hold down, hold down the shift button and just go right across all the way. Okay, let go. And again, since the line is selected, let's increase the weight. Okay, under the format, weight goes so it's about the same, two and a quarter. And then shape outline again, go to dashes and go to the second one. And now there you go. So you might be thinking, okay, what did that do? What we did is we actually separated our chart into four quadrants, four areas, if you want to call them. Okay. The way to look at it is anything past this line to the right has higher than average popularity, higher than average menu mix. Okay. Anything to the left is less than your average popularity. And then the read this line, anything above this line, because it's this axis, is higher than your average contribution margin, which was this 577. It has a higher than average contribution margin. Okay? Anything that's below it has a below contribution margin. So the way to make sure that we did this properly is below contribution margin okay, would be anything below this line right here. And to the left is anything that's of this line is anything that's not popular. So anything in this area right here should in fact be a dog. So if we take a look and we look for our dogs here, there's only one dog and that's pasta. And sure enough, if we compare it here, there's pasta. Okay. So what we would probably want to do at this point is just identify each, each one. So I'm going to click on insert. 
I'm going to click on text box and within each area I'm going to create a small text box okay and here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write uh, for this one star okay now you can play with the formatting okay and maybe increase it maybe change whatever you want it to look like whatever you want okay but this area should be the stars because it's above the average contribution margin and if we go left to right it's above the average menu mix which was the seven percent here so this means that it's high and high if we look back at our previous chart that we put together the previous table so sure enough always make sure that you're happy with what you're doing what's a star here a star this one is shrimp and, oh there's shrimp okay uh, what's another star? These two right here, steak and veal. Yeah, steak and veal. So we're in the right area. Okay. Uh, next, we could insert another text box. And sure, let's highlight this one. And what is this? So if we take a look at our seafood puzzle, yeah, sure enough, it's got high contribution margin, but low popularity because it's on the left of this line. Okay. So this would be, oh, and I lost it, so insert text box while it's still open, puzzle. Okay, and then again, uh, consistency would be nice. So there you go. Okay, I used Bernard. So now I know that this is a puzzle. What I might change here is see how roast beef is written in the star area, but it's really a button that's in the puzzle. I may click on the data label. What happens here is all data labels get selected, but if I click again just once on this individual one, I can move this individual one. And now, roast beef is showing up on this side, which makes more sense. Now, um, another way to make things easy on you, click on the outside of the text box, hit Control C to copy it, and then Control V to paste it. Well, it's telling me that I can't. Typically, you can cut and paste one. Okay, and there you go. So my mistake was I didn't check off it. So if you click the text box, the outer area, click Control C, and then click somewhere else in the chart, click Control V, you'll see that it just popped up over here, and then just move it down here. Now, we definitely want to change the name of this, though. And we should agree, we agreed earlier that anything below this line is a dog. Anything below the item contribution margin and below menu mix is a dog. Okay, that way I don't have to go through all the formatting again. And then we can click on the outer edge of the text box, hit Control C, Control V again, oh, and check off. Control C, click outside, Control V, and there it is. It's right here. I just clicked too many times and write plow horse because that's what's left. Okay. And let's spell plow horse properly. Okay. So there you go. Now plow horse has high popularity, but it's a low in contribution margin. Okay. Because it's below this line. Okay. And now not only do I have this great table here that I can use but now I've presented my findings using a chart. It's a lot more visual. So these are the steps that you can take in order to put together a really good XY scatter chart for a menu engineering analysis.